This is the moment Francisco Oropesa was led away in handcuffs, ending a nationwide manhunt. Authorities say a call to an FBI tip line led them to a home in the nearby town of Cut and Shoot, Texas. U.S. Marshals, FBI, we had a TAC team. They all meandered over there and uh, found, found that, that tip to be true. He was caught hiding in a closet underneath some laundry. They effectively made the arrest. He is uninjured. Bottom line is, we now have this man in custody. That's right, uh, Francisco Oropesa, the 38-year-old man who shot and killed five people, five of his neighbors last week on Friday night after they had asked him to stop shooting his weapon in his yard, uh, was finally captured. Now, uh, as many as 200 law enforcement officials, uh, law enforcement members engaged in the manhunt. Uh, and they finally captured him four days after the shooting due to a lead that was given to the FBI. Now, before we get to more details about his capture, I think it's really important to remember who the victims were. Um, and you should see who they are, we should say their names. You have Diana Velasquez Alvarado, 21 years old, Daniel Enrique Lasso Guzman, just nine years old, Sonia Argentina Guzman, 25 years old, uh, Julissa Molina Rivera, 31 years old, and Jose Jonathan Cesares, 18 years old. All of those individuals died. There were two children uh, who were found covered in blood, but they, they luckily weren't injured. And the reason why they weren't injured is because uh, women were found on top of them, shot to death. They were protecting the kids by serving as human shields. Yeah. So I am very happy that this guy got caught. We have more details about him in just a moment, but John, thoughts? Yeah, that was the detail that got me that I think got a lot of people. It's um, you know, in the same way that shootings are becoming so normalized that it's like, oh, did you know that there was another mass shooting in Atlanta today? Just, you know, yep. it's gonna be a different city, it's gonna be every day. Uh, even the very specific details start to ring a bell when you hear them. Um, people being forced to use their bodies as the last line of defense against these weapons. Uh, in many cases, women specifically. Um, you know, whether it's their kids, whether it's students. Uh, since you know all of the people with the power to stop these shootings from happening have decided not to, uh, they themselves have to use their bodies because that's the only defense left to them. Um, and so incredibly brave, I'm glad that they were able to, to track this guy down. Thankfully the tip came in, God only knows if it hadn't. Right. I mean, Texas is a big state, you can go pretty much anywhere, even with hundreds of people searching. That's not even really a criticism of law enforcement. It's difficult to find someone in this country, it's very large. Um, but I'm glad that they did, that they found him fast before he was able to kill anyone else. And I know, uh, you know you're know, you gonna get to uh, you know another person being charged. That's mm -hmm. the part where I start to, like he did this killing, he should go to jail the rest of his life, that's it. He was tracked down, but now when you bring in the extra person, that's when mm -hmm. I, I have thoughts. Right, I mean, it, it really depends. So the other person is uh, his significant other allegedly, and the authorities are alleging that she was helping to hide him. And that's, a, you can't do that, right? So it depends. I mean, if they could prove that in court, then there are consequences to that. But I do agree with you, the, the main focus here is the person who slaughtered five innocent people in their homes. Mm -hmm. And they had asked him to stop shooting his gun in his yard because there was a baby sleeping in the house. And apparently that infuriated him so much that he decided to kill people. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Now the accused shooter, Francisco Oropesa, is a 38 year old Mexican national. He's being held on five counts of murder with bond set at $5 million, according to the sheriff's office. He is expected to appear in court Wednesday to be read the charges, uh, meaning today, which could be upgraded to capital murder, a death penalty offense in Texas, a source uh, with the San Jacinto uh, County District Attorney's Office told CNN. And uh, as we had shared with you earlier when we first shared the story, uh, he has been deported four times since 2009. And he was spotted on foot Monday of this week, causing several elementary schools to be locked down. But officials ended up losing track of him. The sheriff's deputy, Tim Keene, shared that with the press. Authorities are unsure exactly when Oropesa arrived at the house where he was found later. When the authorities found him, he was apparently hiding in a closet underneath 
a pile of clothing. Uh, but you know, so not as big and tough as when he was shooting his assault rifle right. in his front yard. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I look, it's impossible to put. I think we, we we try to ground everything that we say with empathy, compassion. It's sort of core to you know being on the side of the spectrum that we are. Uh, but there's some people that I just I I can try, but I can. It'd be like trying to put my mind into the mind of an aliens or something. Why right, you'd make 100%. the choices that you did, how you thought any of this would benefit you. Uh, I just I can't understand it. It's an alien experience. Um, he was so I, close to the murder scene too. He was found just ten miles away. Like they're probably terrified to run farther, thinking that he could be right, seen, spotted or videotaped right. or something like that. Um, so they're gonna have their charges. They're gonna try to update it or upgrade it to murder or to you know death penalty. Uh, if you ask them why, they'll say uh, to disincentivize people doing this, um, which makes no sense because they kill people all the time, and that ha didn't stop him from doing it. Uh, it doesn't seem to stop any of these mass shooters, actually, and not the death penalty, not you know years of legal back and forth and appeals that results in your death. The fact that many of these mass shooters are gunned down on the scene or shoot themselves, mm -hmm. none of that seemed to stop them from doing it. So at some point, perhaps rational people can decide that that's not the incentive that they think it is. I mean, the shootings are getting, obviously, they're happening more often, more regularly. But the the cause of the shooting, right, or, or what sparks the shooting, mm -hmm. Though, like those, it's becoming pettier it, and more casual. A hundred percent. Yeah. That. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for articulating it in a way that I couldn't, because you're absolutely right about that. Uh, the story about the cheerleaders who accidentally uh, tried to get into the wrong car, they get shot. I mean, it, the stories are endless, and we haven't even covered every single one of them because we would literally have to dedicate every minute of this show every single day. It'd be a whole show. You it would be the show. entire show, and. I apologize to you guys. I know there was another shooting today in Atlanta, but it's just so hard to cover every single one of these shootings that make the news because it puts you in this state of overwhelming despair and sadness and mm -hmm. hopelessness. You get yeah. what I'm saying? And I don't know well, how to cope with that anymore. If it if it makes you feel better, it's not going to. In the same way that we can't ever possibly cover all of the horrific, even mass shootings, we also can't cover all of the worst instances of police brutality, the worst environmental disasters, the worst systemic failures of our healthcare system. We can't cover all of anything. So don't stress yourself out needlessly. We're gonna constantly fail yeah. because the country's broken in a thousand different ways. It is 100%. And at the same time, I don't want you guys to lose your mind. So every once in a while, we have some lighter stories in the second hour because it, we got we need a break, yeah. right? Yeah, and so if we get to some of those and there is something that you think we missed, understand that we didn't necessarily miss it, we just don't wanna lose our minds. Right, and there is a possibility we might have missed it. So I never mind when you guys send me stories, no, I always I, appreciate I, that. I, I cover pretty much everything in my mind. <laughs> but anyway, um, I also wanna say, and I understand it, for, for those of you who watch these, show, these shows all the time, this is gonna totally uh, be needless, but the, the, the other side of, uh, how could you possibly think that an active death penalty is gonna stop this when it never have ever has ever is like the people who think that what we need is to set up a system of consequences so that uh, a potential guy who's gonna do something like this gentleman did is that he's then going to uh, go through a flow chart of all of the likely consequences mm -hmm. as if that as if as if anything that was going on was rational or logical. Like what? What are, we, what are we supposed to believe that this guy, prior to walking over and beginning to hunt down each individual member of this family, thought this is the beginning of great things for me? It's all up from here. No, he probably assumed best case scenario locked up, probably killed either by himself or by the cops. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that is nonsense. All of that incentive stuff. The only important thing here is not long term consequences from a death penalty. It's that he had the gun. Yeah, I if he didn't have the gun, the shooting would have happened with the cheerleaders. If he didn't have the gun, the shooting would have happened. That's the only factor that mattered was the presence of the gun. That's what made people unsafe. In fact, I want to read a comment from our member Sharon Reedy, who says it is the number of weapons. It is the convenience. Most of all, it's the social attitude. They're the cool toys cool people have. He was drunk playing with a gun. And that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Look, I. Uh, in order to purchase a handgun for self defense, which I keep safely in my home, I stopped smoking pot. 
Like I don't consume it anymore. And mm -hmm. it's because I take that seriously. If you are consuming it, you are not supposed to be able to buy one. You don't pass a background check, right? I don't wanna lie on the forms. So I'm gonna tell the truth. It's a serious thing, it is a lethal weapon and it should be treated as such. Yes, we have a right to bear arms. They always leave out the second half of that you know, constitutional right, which is in a real well-regulated well -regulated militia, but whatever. It is a serious thing to have, it is a serious lethal weapon to have and it should be taken seriously. Not treated as if it's just a casual toy yeah. that you should show off in your Christmas cards or you should lay, leave, lay, lay around, have laying around in your home. Yeah. And I just, there's something about this like normalization of casually messing around with these weapons. It's like driving me crazy because it's- I agree. It's in everyone's minds and they think like, yeah, why, of course, why wouldn't I shoot my gun in my yard? Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.